Before we begin, know that this presentation is based on the original PDF uploaded on eLearning. Good day everyone, I hope you are all in good health and are safe in the comforts of your homes or hostels. Welcome to part 3 of this NoSQL video series. In this video, we will cover document-oriented databases, which is one of the four types of NoSQL database. So, let's get started, shall we? Document databases, also known as document store databases or aggregate databases, are similar to key value databases discussed in the previous video. It is similar in that there is a key and a value. But in a document database, the value contains structured or semi-structured data. This structured or semi-structured value is referred to as a document. Again, this database stores and retrieves data as a key value pair, but the value part is stored as a document. Now, this document follows a format or is written in a certain style. It can be a JSON format or XML format. And there are also other formats available depending on the DBMS. After that, the value, which is again a document, is understood by the database and then it can be queried. Examples of document-oriented database programs are MongoDB, we have CouchDB, DocumentDB, and there are a few other programs that handle document-oriented databases. Now, this database is mostly used for content management systems, blogging platforms, real-time analytics, and e-commerce applications. So, the document-oriented database stores several collections of information. A collection here, so we have here several collections. So this would be one under a document database, and this would be another collection. Now, one collection here is composed of several values, or we call them documents. So we have one document, another one, and so on. Now, these documents follow a certain format. In this example here, we have a JSON format to describe the document. Now, let us compare and convert a relational schema with a document database schema. If we recall, in a relational database system, you must define a schema before adding records to a database, right? So in this example here, we have a student relation with three columns or fields and two records or rows. Now, let us convert this student relation into a document-oriented schema following the JSON format. The above student relation is represented as follows. So this would now be the schema for the student relation. The first entry here would be for the student 16S143. So this is one document in here. And the second record about 16J7890 is now written in this document. So again, this would be one document for the student record 16S143. As you can see in here, this is the primary key. Depending on the format chosen, this is how it would look like. An underscore ID, colon for the primary key, and then the value of the primary key, and then a comma to separate one value or one attribute from another attribute. So this is the record of 16S143, Ahmed. You put the column name here, and then the column symbol, and then the value for SF name. In this record, we have, or in this document, we have Ahmed. And then another comma to separate, again, one field from another field. So the next field is S phone. So we have S phone here, and then a column symbol, and then the value of the S phone. So this is the ID, the primary key, SF name, and then the phone. This would form one document. Again, one record in a student relation or table would be one document in a document-oriented database. The second record is about the student 16J7890. So again, 
we have underscore ID, colon, and then the value for the ID, the primary key here. Separate it with a comma, and then the next field or column, as of name, the value, which is WAFA, and then a comma. And then the next field or column name, which is S phone, and then the value is 996631455. Again, this would form the next document, which is about the student 16J7890. So there are two documents in this collection. Now let's try. Convert the below employee relation into a document-oriented database schema. So this is a relational schema, uh, an employee relation with, with four columns and three rows. Now take your time and pause this video. Are you done? Let's see the solutions. So this would be the first record about employee 100. The next one would be another record for employee 101, and this one would be for employee 102. Now let's take a look into the details. Again, employee 100. Note that we have a curly braces in here, opening curly braces, underscore ID for the primary key. This would be the somehow key, colon, and then the value here is 100, and then a comma, to separate one field from another. Next field here is emp name, so we just follow the column name, emp name, colon, and then the value, Laika Almamari, and then a comma, and then the next column, emp address, colon, then double quotes again. These are double quotes because it's a string, and we know that. I have explained that in a previous video. And then a comma again to separate the address column from the emp birth date column. So we have emp b date for the birthday column and then the value which is 1 slash 21 slash 1980. And we do not put a comma after. Instead, we close this document with a closing curly braces. Again, this document follows the JSON format. So, and then we go to the next record about employee 101. Again, same pattern, open curly braces. And for the primary key, we use underscore ID, colon symbol, and then the value of the primary key, the second record, which is 101. And then comma, column name, the first column name, emp name, colon, and then Khalid Almeri, comma, emp address, colon, the value, a la Kurshinas, a comma to separate, again, address from the birth date. And then we have employee birth date, colon, 2, 3, slash 90. And then we have here for the third record or third row for employee 102. Again, it follows the same format. So this is one collection about an employee with three values. Values for employee ID 100 for employee 101, and for employee 102. And that ends my discussion on document-oriented databases. Here are the online references. You can copy the link and read the details about this type of database. Thank you so much for watching. Please wait for the next video about graph databases. Thank you so much for watching.